Hello and welcome to the third video in the Iron Man visual effects tutorial series using Blender. Last week I covered rigging the model and this week is going to be focusing on making some photo real textures. So by default when you download the model it actually already comes with a load of textures assigned. So if I go into material preview you can see that they're kind of already assigned to the right areas apart from the legs which have something funky going on. So the good news is we don't have to go through and manually apply textures to the various parts of the model. We basically just use these and adjust the materials so that they don't look terrible like this. For some reason the legs are broken so that's going to be the first order of business is fixing them. For now I'm just going to apply the red material to everything and then we can go back and kind of amend it later. And then for these bits on the legs these are meant to be silver I believe so we'll apply the silver material. First thing I'm going to do is open up the shader editor so we can get stuck in with the materials. Let's start with red because this is obviously one of the main materials. The secret to achieving photorealism is quite hard to put your finger on. A lot of it is from the shading process, but if you don't have a lighting setup that kind of makes it sit into your environment, it's very hard to judge how close the material actually is to what you want it to look like. So personally what I like to do is set up an HDRI that's very similar to the setting that we're going to be putting the model in, so you can see how the materials react in that kind of lighting. Now I actually took the time to make my own HDRI, and I took a 360 photo at loads of different stops of dynamic range, which gave me all the lighting information from my bedroom basically where I shot this. As you can see, the model is now in my bedroom and this is where I shot it. So now they're going to be able to light the model realistically, get all the lighting directions and the intensity right. And also because the suit is quite shiny, it'll pick up some reflections of the HDRI around it as well, which will help bed it in. So if we jump back to the object settings. At this point, what you need to do is jump over to a website like textures.com and get some PBR photo textures. Searching for something like Meta will give you loads of options like this already. I use something like this for the gold. It's actually a bronze texture, but it has a really nice kind of scuffed up look to it that looks quite like the Iron Man helmet. When you find one you like, you go through and download each of these image textures at the bottom. Some of them will have more or less maps depending on what the material is, but in general I think these are the main four that will contribute to making the material look realistic. I spent a while trying to get a good texture for the red, and what I found eventually was I searched for a paint material and used like a green blistered paint, it's this one here. So it's called blistered paint and it is green, but obviously I hue shifted it so it's red. And then for the actual metal material, I used this called medieval metal. Again, I went through a few and this was just the one that I found gave me the results I was looking for. You don't have to use the exact same ones I've used, but if you'd like to, those are the names of them. But get something along those lines and then you can use those image textures in Blender. So once they're downloaded, we can start bringing them in and applying them to the model. A shortcut to do this that I've found recently and fallen in love with is Control Shift T when you have the principled BSDF shader selected and then go to the folder where you've stored all of your materials. For this particular material that I downloaded, it gave me more image textures than I actually needed. So I'm only gonna select the ones I want. So those are gonna be the diffuse, the normal, the roughness, the specular, and the bump. We're gonna ignore displacement and ambient occlusion for now. And then if you click principal texture setup and bring those in, it's gonna do it all for you. It's absolutely amazing. You do have to make sure that the image textures are using the right texture because sometimes the automatic setup gets the wrong images if they're not named correctly. So for example, it set the metallic to be the bump, which isn't correct. When I was doing this for the first time, I looked at a lot of reference images from the films, especially the first suit up sequence, because that's kind of the main one I'm modeling this after. And if you look at the textures on the suit in this screenshot, a lot of the materials aren't actually really reflective like you would expect. They're definitely metallic, but they're not really glossy. They have kind of a matte look to them. So the reflections become quite diffuse, especially in the mask. So that's kind of what I wanted to emulate. So the first thing I'm going to do is make this red so it's a little bit closer to what we're trying to go for. I'm going to use an RGB curves node and just take out the green and put some red in instead. So we go to green, take out a lot of the green and then make it more red. Next up, we want to actually unwrap the model because at the moment it's not displaying really any of the texture detail because the UVs aren't set up. For most things, you would go through and kind of unwrap the model really precisely and add seams and stuff where you can't really see them. For this, because it's mostly going to be procedural shading, I'm just going to select everything and then press unwrap and I'm going to do a cube projection unwrap. And what this should do, if we go back into material mode, yep, is unwrap the whole thing. Some of these we're going to have to do manually because they've kind of got the scale wrong so I'm just going to go through and do some of them individually. So if we go back into rendered view we can start to look at this in a little bit more realistic lighting. The bump is obviously way too much, it looks like the suit's been underwater for 100 years and rusted so I'm going to turn the distance right down to something like 0.05 and maybe turn the strength down to something like 0.1. We want it to have a little bit of texture so it's good to have a bit of bump and stuff in there but the suit is mostly supposed to be kind of like a sports car material so you don't want it to be too rough. I think it's still a little bit too matte, we want to add a little bit more more reflectiveness into that. So to do that we can use a color ramp on the roughness texture to kind of fine tweak it a little bit. The color ramp basically just allows you to control the black and white points of the image texture and depending on where you put these it will make a difference to the roughness of the overall texture. So for example dragging the black in more will make it more reflective and if you drag the white down to the other way 
it will become really, really diffuse. We want to go somewhere in the middle of that. So I'm going to pull the black in till it starts to look a little bit reflective, but not too mental. And I'm also going to lift it to more of a dark gray than total black, which just kind of helps to even it out a little bit. Okay, we're going to come back and tweak that a bit more in a bit, but let's go on to the gold for now. So in the gold material, I'm going to select the principal shader. Again, press Control Shift T and navigate to where my gold texture is. This one's more simple. So we just have an albedo or a diffuse metallic normal and roughness. So I'm going to select all of them, hit import texture setup. It's gone a bit brown, so we're going to make a few adjustments, but this is already pretty close to what I was after. So I'm just going to add another RGB curves node onto the diffuse and just lift it up and make it brighter. I'm going to do the same trick with the roughness where I make it a little bit less reflective just by bringing the black point up slightly on the roughness texture. Something like that looks pretty good. Let's quickly take a look at the silver texture for now as well. So if we jump in here, Control Shift T, find the silver, bring these in. So as you can see, this is the medieval metal that I mentioned earlier. This one I don't even think really needs that much change. It looks pretty good out of the box. I think this one could probably be a little bit more reflective to be honest. So I'm gonna add a color ramp onto the roughness and I'm gonna make it more reflective by just dragging the black in a little bit. So just go for something like that. Maybe raise it to a dark gray like I did before in some of the other ones. I'm gonna make an emission material for the reactor. And I'm also gonna just add a little bit of detail into this model. So I'm just gonna extrude it down a little bit and then back into itself and then extrude it down again and make a little thing in the middle. Then what I'm gonna do is add a new material. I'm just gonna call this emission. And instead of a principled BSDF shader, I'm gonna press Shift S on this, go to shader and change it for an emission shader. That's just gonna swap it to a different node. Add a slight hint of blue onto this, set that to something a bit brighter so it's lighting up the suit a little bit. And then because that's now super bright and you can't see any of the detail, what I'm gonna do is go in and assign some of the faces to be a steel material. So if we just do every other face and then make it the metal material, that should add a bit of detail into the reactor. When I composite this, I'll go in and add a glow onto the reactor. So you'll lose these a bit in the glow anyway, but they just help to add some detail into that section of the mesh. That's nearly all the basic texture set up. Now the only thing that's left to do is set up all of the stuff inside the suit in these areas under the flaps. All of this is obviously supposed to be different materials to make it look cool. As you can see here, there's also a dark silver material as well as the normal silver one. So what I'm gonna do is go on the silver material, select all, press Control C to copy it then go into the dark one and then press Control V to paste the silver material into here. And then all you have to do to make it darker is just pull down the um, RGB curves. So then what you can do is select this whole section and apply a dark silver material to it. And then just go in and apply some other materials like the silver to lighten up and add some detail. There's also all of these wires running down inside here. So what we're gonna do is create some sort of generic plastic materials that we can use for the wires. So I'm gonna add a new material and I'm gonna call this blue plastic. And for this one, because it's really simple, I'm just going to make this blue and turn the roughness down a little bit. And you can see in the preview here, it becomes a bit shiny. And then just go in and just press L on some of the ones you want to be blue, which selects the whole mesh. And if you hit assign, that will make them blue. Then what we can do is grab this principled BSDF node, uh, make a new material. I'm going to call this yellow, make some yellow wires. And we can delete this one and then just paste this in here and make it yellow. And now we have yellow as a color. Then I'm gonna make one for red wires and then I'm gonna make one more. This is gonna be black. And then go in and select the remaining wires that aren't yet colored. And there we go, that's the internals set up. It looks really cool, the detail in there is lovely. So now the suit is pretty much textured. And if you wanted a really clean looking Iron Man, you could basically just use this and it's done. But one thing I like to do is go in and add things like fingerprints and scratches and lots of surface imperfections just to add that extra little level of detail. I'm gonna show a couple of ways of doing this. One of them is procedural and doesn't look quite as good, but it's really easy for just making loads of little areas of the suit a bit worn out. And then we're gonna hand paint some materials for the mask to do some custom scratches. So first of all, on the red material, what I'm gonna do is create an entirely separate setup. And I'm actually gonna borrow all of the nodes from the silver setup and copy and paste these into here and put it above. So the silver setup is up here. And what I'm gonna do is create some procedural areas of noise that will allow us to show this undercoat of unpainted metal through. And Blender has a way of doing this that kind of detects the edges of a model if they're at a certain angle. So we can use that to our advantage and that could be the basis of the effect. So the way to do this is to add a geometry node. And if you cycle through these by holding control and shift and clicking, if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, if we come down to the pointiness um, attribute, if you look quite closely, this is highlighting the edges of the mesh. So any areas that have sharp angles become lighter and any areas that are flat become darker. And to exaggerate this, we can add a color ramp node, put this onto the pointiness output and just crank up the black levels. And as you can see, this is exaggerating the edges that it detected. So what I can do now is combine the red and the chrome materials by using a mix shader. Again, if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, you can select both the principal shaders and then press control and zero 
and that will automatically create a mix shader node and plug the two in. And then to combine them using the pointiness as a mask, you take the color output from the color ramp and plug it into the factor on the mix shader. And then if we swap these two inputs around, the red will be the predominant one. And then on the edges where the mask is, you can see it's starting to bring through some of the silver. And you can kind of tweak this to however you like. So if you want more of the silver to come through, you can take the black back and it will kind of reveal more. I like it to be quite subtle because otherwise it starts to look a little bit crazy. And if I hop between the two, so that's the red on its own, and that's the red with the silver enabled in some areas. For some bits, it might be a little bit too much. So for these bits, what I'm going to do is just assign them to be the normal red texture. So what I'm going to do is make a new texture. I'm going to add the red texture to this slot as well. And then we're going to press this button here, which makes a duplicate of it, but keeps the same settings. And then I'm going to name the first one red weathered because that's the one with all the scratches. And then the second one will just be normal red. And then for the normal red one, I'm going to basically bypass all of this stuff at the top and just look at the normal red shader for the metal. And then all you have to do is apply these to the bits of the model that you don't want to be weathered. So for example, if I add the red to this one and then assign it, that will get rid of all the weathering on this section of the model. Same thing for the legs. If I want to do it to these bits, because I think they don't need to be weathered, I can assign just the normal red material to them. And you can see on the hands, it's really exaggerated to the point where the fingers have just turned silver. So let's go in and get rid of that completely. A quicker way to do this is to set one of them just to be normal red. And then what you can do is select all the ones that you want to apply that to, and then shift select the one that you've just changed, press control L and then materials. And that will basically copy the material data from this one to all of the ones you had selected. Cool, I think that's looking good. So now the final step is to make some custom painted textures. I'm gonna do this on the mask because this is kind of the focal point of the suit. And what I'm gonna do is use a scratch texture to kind of stencil some scratches onto the face. So to do this, I'm gonna select the mask. I'm gonna exit the shader editor and go to the image editor. And I'm gonna add a new image. So press new, I'm gonna call this scratches and I'm going to make it 2048 by 2048. So it's a little bit higher resolution. Turn off the alpha channel because we don't need that and then press OK. Then I'm going to open another window and open the shader editor inside of here. And let's go to the material slot and I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to load the gold material into this as well. And then I'm going to duplicate it and call it gold mask. And then in the shader editor, I'm going to import this image texture that we just created that's currently black called scratches. And before I do anything else, I'm going to save it because Blender loves to delete your image textures when you close out without saving them. So it's always good to save. And before going in and painting anything on this, we're going to have to unwrap it properly because this isn't a procedural material. This is actually going to be hand painted. So I'm going to go into edit mode and just isolate this because the topology is good. You can probably just loop select an entire section. So let's try this. There we go. And then you can press control E mark seam. And then let's try and do the same for this one. There we go. Mark seam again. Now let's see what happens if we unwrap this. Let's go to the UV image editor. Yeah, so we've got the two main sections of the face, the front that are unwrapped nicely. The rest of this we can just scale down to be tiny. It doesn't really matter. And then we can make these two nice and big so they're maximizing the use of the texture space. Now I'm gonna press control tab, jump into texture paint mode. And if I start painting on this, you can see how it's gonna work. Essentially, instead of painting lines like this by hand, what I'm gonna do is use a scratch texture that I found online. Really simple to find. You can just type in scratch texture on Google and you'll probably find loads. The more high contrast one tends to be better because you get a bit more control over them. I find the ones that have a little bit less detail are easier to use because you don't end up with a million scratches when you start painting. So if we go over to the tools for the paintbrush, we can come down to the texture box and add a new texture. I'm going to call this scratches. And then you can come down to the texture settings and open the scratches image that you've saved or wherever you saved it. So if I open this one, you can see now we have a stencil that we can move around and rotate and paint onto the mesh. You right click and drag to move it around, hold control, right click and drag to rotate it, and then hold shift and right click and drag to scale it. And then basically all you have to do is just go in and start painting on top of the mesh. You don't want to go too crazy, so I'm just going to paint a few and then sort of move it away and see how it looks. It also helps if you keep the brush quite small so you don't do too many that you don't want to. And then when you're happy with how it's looking, come over here and go to image and just save it so that it's um, definitely saved and you're not going to lose it when you close Blender. Then you can exit texture paint mode and we can start to use this in the shader editor. So if I go back into material preview mode, we've currently got the scratches texture loaded into the mask shader. So now what we want to do is similar to how we made the second material for the red paint to be worn away. We're going to copy the silver material again, paste it up above, and then I'm going to select both of the principal shaders and then press control zero to make a mix shader and join the two together. Then I can take the color output of the scratches texture and plug it into the factor. And if we swap these two around like before, you should start to see some scratches coming through. 
maybe it's a little bit too faint at the moment you can kind of see them there to exaggerate it more we want to add a color ramp into this and just crunch it up so that the blacks are really really black like that basically the more contrast you add the more the scratches will stand out so if we look at this again now you can see the scratches are a lot more visible and if you want the scratches to be darker or lighter you can change the color of the silver material up here with the curves and then on top of that to add some even more detail you can use the scratches texture as a bump map which will basically make it look like the scratches are actually indented into the metal a bit so to do that just add a bump node and plug the output of the color ramp into the height and then to combine this with the metal shader we can basically replace the image texture normal map with the normal map that we created for the scratches so just plug the normal output from the bump into the normal input on the principal shader now if i look at this you can see it creates some really deep scratches you can turn the distance down if it's a bit too much so i might go like minus 0.6 and then you can also turn the strength down to something a bit more subtle and that's looking pretty good so now if we look at the overall shader combined this is with the gold and you can see where the scratches are they're a different color and they look indented into the metal and then the rest of it is gold how it should look and that's pretty much it that's how to create all the textures for the iron man model you can play around with those different techniques and make it more or less battered if you like so that's all the texturing done going to wrap the video up there next week we're going to be looking at animating it and actually tracking it onto the body in some live action footage which should be really fun remember there's a link below to my patreon if you want to get these for a dollar you can save yourself all the hard work and support the channel thanks very much for watching hope you guys are enjoying these videos so far and i'll see you next week